another uh, tool uh, which also points out some security concepts and uh, uh, even though you may not use it the, the concepts are valuable is the Java programming language um, now uh, it had uh, uh, a bit of a heyday a uh, few decades ago um, and I suppose that some would see it as a, a specialized tool uh, for certain cases on the web and that sort of thing. But, I mean, it is a, uh, a programming language. Um, it's a good programming language. Uh, as somebody said, if uh, they ever finished it, it would have been a great programming language. Um, anyways, it's... Uh, you know, it's it's useful um, in a variety of ways. Um, now, some interesting uh, things is that the um, Java is a sort of a combination of the uh, a hybrid of of the uh, compiler and interpreter situation. Um, Java. Uh, uh, when you write a, a Java language program, you will then compile it into um, a sort of a, a Java machine language, and then interpreters are written for different platforms. So there, there is platform portability. If you have a Java interpreter on your particular computer, and it's, you know... They are available for pretty much everything. Um, then, uh, yes, you can uh, you can write uh, a program in in the Java language. You compile it, um, and then the the interpreter, because it is interpreting from a sort of a semi machine language, a sort of a pseudo virtual machine language. Um, it's a, a fairly simple task to then have the interpreter translate it into the actual machine code for that particular platform. So um, we have the advantage of both the uh, compatibility and portability and the speed of operation. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting aspect of it. Um, so, um, in terms of uh, security itself, uh, there are security provisions specifically built into the, uh, the Java language itself. Um, the uh, interpreter, um, uh, this, you know, if, well, as I say, you know, a lot of people think of it just as, as a web uh, programming language. Um, when you're in a, a web situation, uh, when you're, you know, uh, building a, a web page and, and uh, the Java program, uh, applet, uh, function, whatever, uh, that you are, have programmed is, is running in the browser, um, there's a sandbox situation. Now, uh, there are basic um, provisions for protection in this sandbox uh, model by default, but you can also um, program additional security protections. So you can uh, create um, a, a function, an applet, whatever, uh, and tell people, you know, you are safe because this is not going to touch, well, I mean, it, uh, generally speaking, it doesn't touch um, anything outside a specific area of memory. Uh, uh, it doesn't touch the disk. Um, you know, so um, you're safe in that regard. But we, we can go even beyond that and uh, say that it's restricted in what it will do with the network. Um, it is um, uh, even further restricted in terms of uh, the memory locations. So you can... Um, improve on the default security for the sandbox if you don't like uh, what the defaults are. 
Um, so, uh, it uh, specifically addresses uh, issues of uh, buffer overflows. Um, it uh, does very good, uh, uh, well, it does some good uh, garbage collection uh, in some ways. Um, but there are, uh, again, this is one of the areas that maybe it wasn't uh, completely finished. Um, so, uh, there are uh, a number of aspects. And, and uh, people have, there, there are further provisions in the language itself to write additional uh, security protections for it. So, um, Java is um, <coughs> useful uh, not only in terms of uh, the examples that it gives us of, of different concepts in relation to um, what we uh, can do, may be able to do, should have utilities to do in terms of security of uh, developing programs, um, but also in terms of the specific protections that we can include in applications that we develop with Java. It has um, the provisions for doing that um, a, a part of the language and uh, therefore easier to start developing and extending the security tools that we may want for specific purposes within our systems.